What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about user detail service and user details. So I've got out my handy little map here of Spring Security Architecture. And this is really important because you always need this map to know where you are at in Spring Security, so to speak. If you don't have your map, it's really, really difficult to understand what's going on. So now we're gonna be working on the user detail service. The user detail service is a contract that's going to allow us to pull uh, users from the database. User detail service, kind of what it sounds like. It's going to get users out of the database and return them in user details form. So user details, if you notice right here, user details is just a representation of a user in Spring Security. And in our case, we are going to be implementing something called an in-memory user details manager. Now you don't really need to know much about it, but when we first start building our Spring Security app, we don't have any users in a database. So we need the ability to have in-memory users that have actual roles. Our user that was created automatically when we installed Spring Security is a very simple user. It doesn't have roles, it doesn't have, maybe it doesn't have a kind of password that you want. And what in-memory user details, uh, in-memory user details manager is going to do is it's going to make it so that we can kind of tie into our user detail service and actually return user details, AKA just regular users back to our app so that we don't need to have actual users because we don't have users in our actual database yet. But just remember user details service all it's going to do is it's a contract that's going to allow us to get stuff from the actual database. And the user detail service is one of the closest um, entry points to the actual database. Next thing that we're going to be talking about is what are called ant matchers. Now, I don't know why they call them ant matchers. It is kind of a weird word, like ant. Like whenever I heard ant matchers, like I always just assumed maybe it had to do something to do with actual just you know, like little bug ants, but it really doesn't. Ant matchers is a throwback to something that Apache, some type of Apache term. And we don't actually, as Spring Boot developers these days, we don't have to mess with Apache hardly any. So just really realize that ant matchers are just um, URL matchers at the end of the day. They control how we access our actual URLs. And they always have this pattern. First, you always have the ant matcher, of course, and then you have the type of request that you will allow or disallow. You will have a string right here, which represents the URL that you plan on uh, modifying or accessing. And then you will have the access type that you want. With the actual access type, you could permit all, you could deny all, or more likely what you're going to do is you're going to use what's called authenticated, which is going to make it so that uh, people who use the post method have to be authenticated. There's all different variations of this. You could have uh, no get, you could have just a get and no actual string right here. And if you notice, or if you look into the actual code, there's all different types of constructors that will allow for all different types of variations. And there's even regex matchers. And We'll just get super nerdy right here. So you you may be see you, one day you will probably see NVC matchers, and this is kind of important because what you need to really realize about ant matchers is that they are incredibly specific. If you get one parentheses wrong, if you get one slash wrong, it won't work, and you will literally bang your head up against the wall wondering why it won't work. But with NVC matchers. They are a lot lax, laxer. They're a lot more flexible. I would still use ant matchers with web API, but if you find yourself struggling to uh, learn how ant matchers work, maybe give MVC matchers a try. And it's also a really important thing because you may be asked that in an interview set in an interview setting, and you probably want to know what MVC matchers are. So I, I would maybe give MVC matchers a Google and learn just a little bit about them so that you know uh, a little bit how they work. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and start coding this thing up. So I'm in my security config file right now. And what I want to do now is let's just exper experiment with ant matchers and let's just learn a little bit about how ant matchers actually work. So um, later on down the line, we will add more complicated ant matchers. But for right now, let's just go in here and let's just make it so that we can actually use the get request for all of our endpoints. And that might actually make sense for your API because get requests are typically something that maybe you want the public to be able to access, maybe not, it's your app. I trust that you kind of know what you want to do. The next thing is that we are going to just go down here and we're going to start working on our user details service. So. What's going to happen is that this is going to actually return a user detail service. And here's where we are going to implement a actual in-memory user. So we're going to go in here and what is going to be returned is a user details. And this is important because notice the relationship between them. A user details, we are returning actual users. We are returning in-memory users. They might not be in a database, but uh, we're tying into the user details service and we're um, we're actually building our own users. So we go here, then we are going to give this a username. Uh, feel free to call it whatever you want to, but I'm just gonna call this an admin. Need to give this double quotes here and also need to get my user. So bring in user. And next what we're going to do, we're going to give it a password. For right now, we are just going to be using clear text passwords, but this is just for being able to actually work on our app. We are going to change this down the line. And the role that we're going to have is admin, and we can also go up here and have build. So let's go ahead, add another user detail. So here we have user, we have user.builder and same exact thing. We're going to go down here. We're going to give it a username of user. We're going to go user right here. And we're going to give it a password of let's see password. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to give it a role of user. And one of the reasons that we actually have this uh, in memory authentication is because here you can actually go and add roles, you can permit it by role. So we'll say has any role, has role. And I'm not going to do that, but feel free to if you want to. If you want to use ant metrics to secure your route by role, you are more than welcome to. In fact, I would highly recommend it because it will show you how ant metrics work. So last thing that we're going to do, we're gonna go build and we're going to return a new in-memory user details manager. So. Just go ahead, throw in both the, the admin and the user, and you should be good to go. So notice what we did here, just to kind of recap. We went in to our user details service, and we returned a user details, and we went and built a user details, and now we're returning them with the in-memory user details manager. So created these two users, which are user details, and then return them with the in-memory user details managers. And we now actually have users we can use that aren't just, just completely basic. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.